Hi, I'm Crypto Lou, and today I'm going to be taking you through a beginner's guide to Binance, which is an altcoin exchange. Now, this tutorial is aimed for newbies, so if you are already trading, then this video may not be for you. If you do like this video today, then please give me a like. It really helps me to grow my channel and understand what kind of content you like and enjoy. So first up, I thought I'd take you through the reasons why I moved across to Binance. One of those was the fact that um, I actually was um, wanting to purchase IOTA. I couldn't do that on Bittrex. I'm kind of a big Bittrex fan. I really like Bittrex, but I wasn't able to buy IOTA. So what I did is I found out that it was available um, to purchase on Binance, and then I started using Binance. Now, with regards to Bittrex, they're currently not accepting new signups. Um, so a lot of people are moving across to Binance. Now, that's not necessarily a particularly bad thing. You know, they only proportion their software to a certain amount of users. And because there's so many new people getting into crypto, what they're doing is just kind of stopping that so that they can make the enhancements to their system to cope with that user load that are actually hitting onto their site. So one of the good things about Binance is the fact that there are lots of new coins that are available on here, and it's great to diversify your portfolio and have a look at these different types of altcoins. So first up on Binance, the first thing that you come up to is they have loads of different types of competitions. For people that are trading a lot, you know, you can win a, a Lamborghini. Um, there's different types of ones that you can go through and you can have a look at the different uh, types of competitions in here. They also do have their own referral program. So what I'll do is I will put my link in the summary below so that if you do want to have a look at Binance, please feel free to use that. So what you have up on the screen here is you have all the different types of markets that are available. So they have um, the BTC markets, Ethereum markets, US dollar tether markets as well, and they have something called BNB markets. Now these are different types of coins that you can use to actually go through and purchase your altcoins. Now BNB markets is their own type of coin that they have. So what it allows you to do is you can purchase your coins using their coin and what you actually get is you get 50% off the commission fees. So that works out quite nicely. It can help you to save some money when actually doing your trading. You then have the BTC market, so obviously Bitcoin, and you can see the different types of pairings in here. You can see that there's, you know, absolutely pages and pages of different types of coins that you can go through and you can purchase using Bitcoin. You then have the Ethereum markets as well. So again, a whole huge range of choice in here. Then you have the US dollar tether market, and you've got a small selection in here. If there are coins that you are regularly kind of trading with and looking to purchase, for example, if you were going through and you always um, tended to want to have a look at XRP Bitcoin, you can actually click on the star besides that. That will then go into a favorite section. So you've got quick links to go through rather than through kind of scrolling through all the different types of coins that are available in their markets. If you want to go through and start loading up funds into your Binance account, what you need to do is click on to funds and then click on to deposits and withdrawals. So in here, it then shows your assets. So what we'll do in this example, we will say that we're gonna be depositing Ethereum. So if I click on to deposit, it will then provide me with an address. Now I can also scan a QR code. So in here, I could say, for example, my um, Ethereum is in my Coinbase account. What I can do is simply scan the QR code, or I can copy the address that's here as well, and then I would send my funds from Coinbase for in this example across to Binance. Now, like it says here, it's important that you only send Ethereum to that deposit address and sending any other currency to this address may result in the loss of your deposit. Now, with regards to withdrawing, you'd simply click on to withdraw. Then you would put in your Ethereum withdrawal address. So wherever you're sending that to, whether or not that be your online wallet or whether or not that be a hardware wallet, you can put the address into here. You would then simply click on to max and then you would click on to submit. Now it's really important that when you are actually withdrawing your um, kind of altcoins, you're just ensuring that your wallet actually supports that altcoin, otherwise you may lose your withdrawal. Kind of security best practices is the fact that you shouldn't really keep your different types of cryptocurrencies within Binance, it is an exchange. What you really wanna do is withdraw that across to an online wallet or a hardware wallet, just that it gives you that extra level of um, security. You know, you've got two-factor authentication and things like that in there. And it's just kind of, you know, best practices, really. 
You also have a section called orders. So in orders, you have your open orders. So that is anything that hasn't yet completed or gone through. You have a full order history and you also have a trade history in here. We'll just have a look at news. This is quite a handy little section. Now in the news, what it does is it shows us new listing announcements, things like that. So it's quite a little helpful thing. If you are looking at a specific coin, you'll get a good understanding of whether or not that's going to be coming on to Binance or not. Just taking us back onto the main screen, from here we can also change the language, which is pretty good in the fact that they are catering for more of a worldwide market. You've got the likes of English, uh, Spanish, French and Chinese in here. And within the exchange, they do have a basic and they have advanced. Now, I'm not going to be going through advanced today. This is just for newbies. But in the advanced section, it just allows you to be able to go through and chart. Now, in this example today, I'm just going to click on the pairing, which is XRP to BTC. So I'll briefly explain what the screen is showing you right now. So top left-hand section here, you have the sell orders. And in the bottom left-hand section, you have all the buy orders going through at the moment. Then at the top here, you have what the last price was. So what, obviously, this is very uh, interchangeable and changes kind of almost every second. You then have a 24-hour change. So how much has that changed within 24 hours? Again, this is another one that is going up and down. However, within the last 24 hours, you can see that this has gone up by, what, 38, 39%. So it looks like it's going through really well at the moment. It'll give you a 24-hour high. It'll give you a 24-hour low and the 24-hour volume. On the top right over here, you have the crypto pairings. And in the bottom section here, you have the market trade history. So you can actually go through and change it to your own trade history as well. So if you click onto yours, it will show you your own trade history. Now, one of the good things about Binance is they have three different options in terms of trading. So you have a limit, you have market, and you have stop limit. Now, market is probably the simplest process, um, and it's good for kind of newbies. Essentially, all you're doing is you are buying or you're selling immediately at the market price. So you're not defining what price you are selling or buying at. Then what you would do is you can put in your amount of um, that you're selling or if you're buying. You could then go through and put in the amount that you're looking to buy and or sell. Or you can go through and you can say, well, what I want to do is I want to sell 50% of what I currently have. So it's just a nice easier one rather than actually typing in the amount of XRP that you're looking to actually sell. Then once you're ready to do so, you would then simply go on and you would click on to sell XRP. Next up, you have limit. So with regards to the limit, what you can do is you're actually setting the price that you either want to buy or sell your XRP at. So you are defining it yourself and then you will wait for that order to then complete Again, you can then either type in the amount that you would like to uh, buy or you can select again, you have these percentages in here and then it will give you a total and then you would either click on to buy or you would click on to sell, whatever you're doing in here. The next option that you have is a stop limit. Now, this is a more advanced kind of section or feature that they have. And what it does is it triggers a buy or a sell order depending on the values that you enter into the stop and to the limit sections. Any open orders that you have will also show up in this section as well as a 24 hour order history. Now you can customize these views a little bit as well. So what you can do is on this um, section up here, you could say instead of showing me the buy and the sell orders, just show me, for example, the uh, buy or the sell orders in here. So you can kind of click between the two just to give you a little bit more kind of customization in here. You can also view um, your favorites in here. So that was from that main screen that we had. You can look at just the Ethereum markets and pairings and you can look at the uh, BNB kind of pairings in here as well. In the center section here, you have your buy and your sell orders, and you can have a look at these for a specific time frame. So you can look at the last 30 minutes, last few hours, days and weeks, etc. Just to track through how that coin is actually buying and selling at the moment. They have a pretty good FAQ section where it gives you some FAQs around the, um, the assets and also specific questions as well. Now, it's always worth going through kind of some of the FAQs if you have questions. Obviously, if you have any kind of basic questions that you want to ask me, please feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to um, help out wherever I can. What we'll just do is take a look at the fee structure. 
So with regards to their fees, depositing is free. There is a fee for trading, which is 0.1% trading fee. If you have BNB, you can choose BNB to deduct 50% trading fee. Um, this is for a limited time only, but that was the BNB markets that I was showing earlier on. Now, there are um, different types of fees for withdrawing as well, which is um, not brilliant, but it gives you a full comprehensive list of how much they will charge you. There's a couple that are free, um, which are the likes of gas, and um, I think it's also a NEO. Let me just have a look through, see if I can find NEO. And of course, NEO was the top after I just scrolled down. So NEO is also free to withdraw. Now, that was a very brief overview of Binance. Um, I think it's a pretty good exchange. I like the fact that it's got lots of new coins coming up available on it. And it's really great to diversify your portfolio and be able to go through and kind of just try out different types of coins. And I hope that you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like. And if you'd like to see more tips, reviews and tutorials, then please hit subscribe. Thanks. And I'll see you soon.